So, here we have a snowy scene. Let's turn it into a snow globe. First thing we're going to do is come across, we're going to pick up the elliptical marquee tool. Now with the elliptical marquee tool on the menu bar here, I'm going to come and make sure we've got the end one selected. This is the new selection, that is quite important, use the new selection. Bring in the elliptical marquee tool out into something like this here. Clicking down, but press shift on the keyboard as well. So click down, press shift on the keyboard, and you get yourself a perfect circle. Clever, or what? Releasing it, and as you release it, you'll see you get that little rectangle with a flag on the back. That means you can move it around. This is because we have got that new selection. So bringing it into this sort of position here would be pretty good, something like that. Right, next, command J, control J, copies that selection and pastes it in as a new layer. That is the start of our snow globe. To give it a little bit more definition, we're simply going to go to Layer, dropping down to Layer Style, Style Settings is where we're heading. We're going to go for Glow. Now with Glow, we're going to go to Inner Glow. You'll notice a line coming round. The size is 5 pixels, bringing it out like this. And that sort of area there looks pretty good, but I'm not sure. A nice warm cell of yellow works. Clicking in the window brings up our colour picker. We can come and we can put white in. You may want to do that, or what you can do. I call it a snow globe. It's actually one of these globe effects. You can use it on sort of any sort of scene that you like, I suppose. So bringing it in, let's go for that colour there. And a bit of a blue to give it that glassy look like the look of that and let's give it a drop shadow while we're at it and just taking the size up into that area job done don't worry we can come back and we can adjust this so there's our globe how about a base good idea coming up let's come in again with the marquee tool we're going to go to the rectangular marquee tool again making sure we have the new selection with our new selection i'm going to click down dragging it out into that sort of area like this now, as a base, that doesn't look particularly interesting, does it? No. Select. Transform Selection. Puts the Transform tool around the selection. Bringing it out, you can see we've got those arrows there, the bent arrows. Bring it inside, we've got an arrow head. Right click, now choose Perspective. Will allow us to bring the two top corners in together. So it just about touches the globe like that. I'm just going to go by this one side here. Coming down to the bottom, you may want to pull that out. Again, you'll notice the two bottoms coming out equally together like that. So the two bottom corners have come out equally. Click on the green tick, has now applied it. We're going to put it in to a new layer. So we're going to click on the new layer. That has taken the selection. It's put it onto layer 2, which we're going to just click on that and call base so we know exactly what it is. Right, the base we want to fill with black. Now, if you've got any other colours, press D on the keyboard, so that's restored the default colours. I'm just going to pick up my paint bucket tool, and I'm going to drop it in there, and that's now filled it with black. Command D, Control D has got rid of the selection. It's a little bit out of place, so I'm going to pick up the Move tool, and this is where you can have a lot of fun. Using the arrow keys on the keyboard, you can start to nudge it around. So I'm going to nudge it around like that, lifting it up a bit and nudging it back like this until it fits in snugly with our globe. Something in that area. Great stuff. Right, coming back to our base, bringing my cursor over the thumbnail here, pressing Command or Control. You can see we get a selection on the back of it. We're clicking down, there's the selection now around that base got the default colors still of black and white we're going to pick up the gradient tool it's the linear gradient that's this one here coming across we've got the default colors of black and white click OK to that coming down I want the black to be in this corner here or this end here the right hand side coming through light in the foreground but press down shift as well that just ensures you get a you know a completely horizontal line release this you get a bit of a wonky line so just press shift and drag it across in it goes, and you can see the way we've got that lighting effect coming through. Command D, Control D to deselect. Right, coming back to our snow globe itself. I want to give it a little bit of a look as if it's got some magnification going on. So we're going to come down to our layer 1, bring in our cursor in, pressing Command or Control. You'll notice the way you get that little square on the back of the cursor, clicking down. We're now going to go to Filter. We're going to go down to Distort, we're going to go down to Spherize. And when Spherize opens, come here, thank you. When Spherize opens on our swan, we're going to use our little 
sort of minus to zoom out so we can see exactly how it's going to look. There it is there, if I click down that's the before, that's the after and I think that's just a little bit much. You can see that's it showing us the preview of how it's going to look. I'm going to drop this down. As you drop it down you'll notice the grid lines getting closer together. You'll notice the image shrinking down a little bit. We're going to take it to round about that area. So now we're going to go from this to that. That looks pretty good like this. Well, we've got 51% click OK, through it goes, and you can see the way it just pops it up a little bit, giving that look of magnification. Great stuff. Right, while we're at it, while our selection is still here, snow. We're going to put in a new empty layer. We're going to double click, we're going to call this snow, because that's what we're going to be adding to it. Now, we've got the foreground color of black, as we've seen before, so just pick up your paint bucket tool, we're going to fill this snow with black, there it is. We're now going to go to filter, we're going to go to noise, we're going to go to add noise. With add noise when this opens we're going to put in a figure of 200%. We're going to use Gaussian, we're going to use monochromatic and we're going to click OK to that. We're now going to go back to the filter menu, blur, we're going to drop down to Gaussian blur and we're going to put in a figure of not 23, no that would be daft, we're going to put in 2. So we've got a sort of 2 pixel radius feather, feather, <laughs> two pixel radius blur, close. And if you look in, you can see that's what it is before, releasing it, that's what it looks like after. We're going to click OK to that. Right, now at this stage, it would be a good idea if we could see what we're actually working with. So, changing the blend mode from normal to screen, you can now see what you're working with. And if we come to, well, I'm going to use Command L, Control L, which brings up the Levels dialog box. And I'm going to bring this into that sort of area there. And I'm going to bring this in. And you notice the center slider moving along with it into that sort of area. And just moving this across like that. Yep, that looks pretty good. Happy with that. And click OK. Now it doesn't look a lot like snow at the moment, go on, you can be honest, I know it doesn't. But if you go to filter, you can go to blur, you can go to motion blur. Now with motion blur, give it an angle of what we got, minus 27 there, that looks pretty good. The pixel distance is uh, 24, you might want to take it up a little bit, you might want to drop it down entirely up to you. But just seeing the way it's working there in the preview, click OK to that. Right, if we zoom in to this sort of area here, you can see there it is. It looks pretty much like a blizzard at the moment, so dropping the opacity down. We can just drop it down into that area there. That looks better. Right, let's come to our snow. Let's use Command J, Control J to duplicate our snow. This time we're going to make the snowflakes appear bigger. Now to do this, we're going to come to Filter. We're going to drop down to Pixelate. We're going to go to crystallize. Now when this opens, the cell size is 10. Let's take it up into that sort of area there. And if you just take a look, we're going from that to that. So we've got much bigger snowflakes coming through there. In fact, you can make them a little bit bigger if you want to, something in that area. And we're going to click OK to that. Wait for that to work through. Using Command L, Control L will bring back the level dialog box. And I can just move this into that sort of area like this and you can see there's our bigger snowflakes and just moving that around job nearly done back to filter back to blur back to motion blur clicking on this will give us the same settings but if I move it into the opposite direction so it's like that we now got the snowflakes coming through I'm just increasing the distance and click OK to that right you will notice that our opacity is down let's bring the opacity up so we've got this sort of effect going on, which is a bit over the top, yes, I know. But dropping down, putting in a mask, got the default colors. So we're using the layer mask on our Snow 2 layer. We're going to go to Filter, Render, and we're going to send in the clouds. Now the clouds, because it's black and white, are going to give that sort of look to it. So we've removed some of the actual sort of snowflakes. We've sort of got rid of that overall pattern effect because it's pretty random with the clouds going in there and if we just zoom in let's take a look at that see how it's working yeah it looks pretty wintry she looks cold he's fed up and going home the car parks the other direction by the way but so uh, you know that 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. I like the way that's looking. Don't forget, you can always drop the opacity down and blend it in entirely up to you. It's coming down to this layer here and just dropping down the opacity on that one and taking the opacity and that's back up. That's better. Command zero to control zero to go to fit on screen. There it is. There's our snow globe. What you can also do is come to the background layer using command J, control J. We have duplicated that background layer. The reason for this, filter, blur, Gaussian blur and we're going to blur the background by that sort of an amount like that just to make it stand out and there it is that's creating the snow globe on my website I'm going to be taking this a stage further we're going to be adding text to it we're going to be adding a bit of a better base and we're going to be doing a few other little bits and pieces so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video please join me on the website if you'd like to see how we can move this on just a little bit further until the next time it's happy imaging and take care